Deep under Tennessee, massive worm-like drills are about to carve out a tunnel that should turn an hour-long traffic headache into a 10-minute joyride. It could be one of the craziest U.S. tunneling experiments in decades. But on the other side of the planet, Europe and Asia are actively testing the Hyperloop, the vacuum tube technology that seems out of this world. These are two totally different ideas, but they have the same goal, to make sci-fi travel a reality. For the first vision of the future, we have to focus on Nashville. The story here is about a blueprint for something called the Music City Loop. It's a proposal for a private paved underground highway meant for Tesla vehicles. The whole idea is point-to-point -point travel. You get in, pick a destination, and go straight there without stopping at every station. You can already ride a limited version in Las Vegas around the convention center. Nashville is supposed to be the city scale test. The proposal is a direct underground link between Nashville International Airport and downtown. The new transit system is supposed to reduce a 9-mile, 40-minute trip to just around 8 minutes. If they pull this off, the experience should be truly futuristic. You hop in a car at the terminal, drop into a tunnel barely wider than the vehicle itself, and shoot through a pressurized tube. You bypass the gridlock, ignore the stoplights, and arrive at your hotel before people on the surface have even merged onto the highway. That all sounds amazing, but how close are we to this reality? The technology technically exists, but it has some massive issues. The system in Vegas is simple, and it uses real drivers. To hit that 8-minute promise in Nashville, the cars can't be driven by humans. They'd have to drive themselves bumper to bumper at highway speeds inside a tunnel barely wider than the car. In a space that tight, human reflexes aren't fast enough. One hesitation or malfunction and the entire system turns into a traffic cork. So we need automated driving systems or really cool robots. But before we worry about AI-driven vehicles, there's one other issue. The real problem isn't the tunnel, it's the ground itself. Large parts of Tennessee sit on limestone, a rock that slowly dissolves like a sugar cube in water. Over time, that turns solid ground into something closer to Swiss cheese, filled with hidden caves and empty pockets. That's a problem for any tunneling project here. When a drill hits one of these hidden voids, it doesn't just slow down. It can suddenly break into the open air. Water can rush in. The machine can lose support beneath it. Tunneling here becomes a real-life game of Minesweeper. One unfortunate turn, and the machine can fail and sink. Even worse, the collapse can travel upward, opening a sinkhole at the surface, right in the middle of a busy city street. But if the ground is this dangerous, why build this in Tennessee? The reason is simple. Nashville is in the middle of a massive traffic crisis. It's one of the fastest growing cities in America, and the surface roads are already at their breaking point. The city is desperate enough to try anything, even if it means drilling through a geological minefield. Engineers see Tennessee as the ultimate final boss for tunneling. If they can prove that this high-speed system works in limestone full of hidden caves, they can prove it works anywhere on Earth. It's a high-stakes bet. Solve Nashville's gridlock or watch a multi-billion dollar project disappear into a sinkhole. But while Americans are busy fighting the ground, other parts of the world are trying to avoid it altogether and basically fly through the air. This brings us to the second vision of the future, the Hyperloop. For years, experts rejected this concept as too complex, but development didn't stop. In fact, right now, test tracks in China and Europe are running successful experiments that are breaking speed records. Here is how it works. When you stick your hand out of a moving car, you feel the air push back. The faster you go, the harder it fights you. At extreme speeds, air becomes a solid wall. That invisible wall is what limits how fast trains and planes can go. The Hyperloop solves this by cheating. You build a sealed tube, suck all the air out to create a vacuum, and levitate a pod inside using magnets. With almost no air and no wheel friction, the pod doesn't really roll anymore. It glides through the tube. China is currently leading this race. 
A state-owned contractor recently sent a pod through a low vacuum tube at 387 miles per hour. That's faster than the Shanghai Maglev, the fastest train in commercial service. And they aren't stopping there. The goal is to hit airplane-like speeds. But achieving those high-speed numbers isn't what's holding this technology back. For a long time, Hyperloop could only go straight, so networks were impossible. However, recently, engineers in the Netherlands found a way to switch lanes in a vacuum tube, bending what was once a single highway into a blueprint for a continent-spanning web of travel. It might sound like a small thing, but it's a major breakthrough for the whole industry. The European side has big ambitions. They're sketching out a massive network that looks like a subway map stretched across an entire continent. The goal is a web of vacuum tubes spanning more than 15,000 miles and linking around 130 major cities. The idea is to make short airplane flights unnecessary. You could live in Berlin and work in Paris and travel from place to place quicker than dealing with a downtown rush hour. In Switzerland, they're testing something called the Infinite Loop, a circular track that works like a hamster wheel for the pot, letting engineers simulate long-distance travel without building a massive straight tube. India is also building its own test tubes, with plans aimed at connecting large cities like Mumbai and Pune, and turning a miserable three-hour drive into a 25-minute trip. It all sounds like the future is already here, but there's a reason we don't see hyperpooling pods around already. The engineering problems are huge. One of the biggest problems is the sun. When metal heats up, it expands, and over hundreds of miles, even sunlight can make a steel tube stretch. That's a serious issue when you're trying to keep a pod zooming through a perfectly aligned tube at super high speeds. Engineers basically have to create flexible sections that let the tube move without messing up the vacuum seal. And then there's safety. A Hyperloop tube is basically a spaceship stretched across the ground. Inside, there is almost no air. Outside, normal atmospheric pressure is constantly trying to find its way in. If the tube is damaged by an accident, a structural failure, or even debris, the air does not slowly leak inside it explodes inward. That sudden rush creates a pressure wave that races down the tube and slams into everything in its path, including the pod itself. That's why Hyperloop safety has more in common with spacecraft engineering than traditional rail. Failure here is not gradual, it's instant. So who's more likely to win this battle in the near future? In the short term, the tunnel approach is more likely to win. It's still cars and tunnels, just faster. Even if the plan gets scaled back, parts of it can still be built and used, which makes it way more likely to show up first. Hyperloop is the opposite. The payoff is bigger, but it depends on multiple hard problems being solved at the same time. Perfect vacuum tubes, reliable switching, and safety systems that can handle worst-case failures. One weak link can shut the whole thing down, so it's harder to roll out quickly. Either one could change how we travel. Either way, the goal is simple. Kill the commute. So what would you trust more? A deep tunnel carved through rock or a vacuum tube above ground? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.